Now, speaking for myself, I've always enjoyed running spy missions and learning different routes. Missions such as Lua Spy have a lot of different routes and angles to learn, so it makes the replayability a little different each time that I want to approach it. Other missions like Jupiter Spy, I could do interesting teleport mechanics with the likes of Wisp, bypassing glass barriers and shortcutting my way around the map. However, I do understand that there is a portion of people out there who don't enjoy spies for whatever reason. Whether you either find them too difficult or uninteresting, it doesn't matter the reason, the main point still stands is that you are simply preferring to skip over those missions whenever possible. So to the both groups of people, the aim of the game is to get in and get out of your rewards. So let's do just that and explore a build designed for getting around with hardly any resistance or issues. As always guys, timestamps are added within the video. Now starting off, there are plenty of options for stealth related Warframes, but for this video in particular, we're definitely going to be using a very easy to apply speedrunner style with the likes of Wukong as our selection. Wukong's second ability is Cloudwalker. Now when cast, Wukong evaporates into a cloud of mist floating and maneuvering through tile sets with fluid-like control. This ability is absolutely insane, not only for the ease of movement, but also for being able to bypass environmental lasers without setting off their alarms, making for one of the best easy to use speedrunning tools for many missions. Now, when you pair that with ciphers for auto hacking, you get quite the setup. Speeding effortlessly towards each objective and auto-complete hacking for you is definitely gonna be a much easier approach in these types of missions. Well, you know, until you start doing Sorty spy missions, or even the likes of the Archon Hunt spies as well. You see, it's at this point where you cannot use ciphers and you are needing to complete the new Nama hack system. These controls, when hacking, inverse and switch up your controls, making the player focus even more on what they're needing to do. Enter Perspicacy. This Helm and Confusion ability can override and auto-hack all consoles in the game's current state, making for a much better and upgraded version of a Cypher, whilst also saving you materials needed to spend on building Cypher blueprints. Whenever you enter a mission, Perspicacy is an ability you want to activate and it will remain active until you reach and hack a console, giving you plenty of room and space to cast before you enter your Cloudwalker or even during between Cloudwalker casts. This setup is one I have been using for months and I wanted to go and share it with those who are either not aware or looking for a little help. Alrighty then Clark, how's that build of yours looking then? So it's to quickly know that Wukong doesn't need a tremendous amount of help to get this setup going. In fact, the mods are actually only but enhancing timers and quality of life. So whatever you have available for yourself, fit it in. But the build is more centered around that two ability combination of Cloudwalker meets Perspicacy. Up first, we have Duration. And I realize I haven't shown and detailed all of Wukong's abilities in this video, but that is for a reason. You won't really be needing them at all. Perspicacy itself doesn't really scale off anything but efficiency, so pretty much all of our focus is in extending the durational length of his Cloudwalker ability by, well, buffing and pumping up those duration numbers. Up next, we've got efficiency. Now for me, in my setup and where I am in the game, I have plenty of availability to not really require energy throughout my mission. However, if you don't have that luxury, then using a streamlined mod with a flow or a prime flow should be some help if you find yourself getting a bit lower on your usage of energy. Or if you do go and have the mod energy nexus, that will also help some energy regen along with the energy siphon mod as well. It's a good combination. Ultimately, when it comes to efficiency, do and slot in what fits you. Up next, we got range and it does have a purpose as it can go ahead and stun enemies with Cloudwalker, but it's not really needed in my opinion. You see, we will be skipping past patrols and heading straight to the objective, no questions asked. So this stat can be punished by getting the most out of your duration with a narrow-minded mod inserted into your build. So if you do have that, whack it right in. And then finally, we got that strength. And again, it doesn't really have a purpose here for these two abilities. It can heal your celestial twin, but you won't really be needing him either. So we can leave this as it is and move on. As for the quality of life options, you're mostly looking for casting speed like natural talent, or you can use amber shards. Other mods like preparation in combination with flow give us a full amount of starting energy to hop straight into our missions, no problems. But I'm sure footed is not a necessity for this build. So if you don't have it, don't sweat it. This is only here as a backup mod if I happen to not be focusing or paying attention. Perhaps ending my Cloudwalker ability early and getting caught off guard. It's nice to not be knocked down and keep my momentum going. So if you don't have this mod, you can always go and use like a handspring mod as an alternative by all means. 
Now, besides from those, any parkour velocity mods or movement speed mods are also fine to add into your build. If you find yourself running out of energy, but you still want to passively move around and get around nice and quick, they will go and fit in here, slot them in. As for the arcanes, well, the first major arcane that screamed out to me was the Molt Efficiency Arcane, giving us increased duration, keep on our Cloud Walker ability active for longer, help on us cover more distance per ability usage. Other arcanes are on the screen if you wish to go and try them yourself, but otherwise, arcanes do not maketh the build. They only but give a bit of background support. Archon Shards. So as mentioned earlier, if you do have the two times Amber Shards to spare, then go ahead and use them here and really help that casting speed. It's a great quality of life keeping in theme to an already promoted speed running like build. And then it should be no surprise that the Crimson Shards give us the opportunity to further buff that ability duration, making Cloudwalker even better and long lasting. Other shards I also enjoyed were Amber Shards for maximum energy on spawn if you don't own a preparation mods, and some Azure Shards for that energy maximum increase, allowing our preparation mod to scale off of it if you don't have a primed flow for example. Similar to the Arcanes, these Archon Shards again don't make the build, so slot in whatever quality of life you prefer for yourself. Ability Rotations so I don't think I really need to give an in-depth rundown here for you guys. This is an extremely effective yet simple two ability cast setup. I usually begin by casting my Perspicacity right off the mission rip. Getting this cast and setup is a good way to make me focus on the task at hand, which is dodging and weaving my way through the tile set. Now do go and keep in mind, whenever you do go and use this ability and successfully get your auto hack off, you will need to go and recast it again. So try to keep your eye on whether or not it's toggled by looking at your HUD UI ability in the corner of your screen. From there, it's Cloudwalker's time to shine. When this ability is cast, keep it directed and focused on wherever you are aiming and hopefully with time, those missions that you either enjoyed or didn't enjoy, you can get through them a lot faster and easier with a setup just like this one. Guys, guys, hear me out. It's out of theme, but I wanted to go and give a heads up. This ability goes against the feel for Warframe. It has been mentioned before that the likes of D. Rebecca hasn't really been a fan of this ability and would change it, but I believe due to popular demand, it's still within the game. Now, no shade at her and don't leave some negative feedback, but just in case this ability gets changed in the future, whether it be slower or it triggers alarms on cast, I would advise you to keep this build somewhat in mind, but just shift it onto the next Warframe that you also enjoy. An example of that, and personally for myself, I like Loki as my backup frame. So if changes do happen here, then it's all good. But for now, the Monkey King is still one of the best when it comes to spy mission ease of effectiveness. Thank you guys for watching today's video, and I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. A friendly reminder that if you did, I enjoy creating videos. So leaving a support with a cheeky like or sharing the video with a friend goes a long way in encouraging me to keep going with these videos. If you are new to the channel, come subscribe. But as always, guys, I'll be seeing you again in the next video.